Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be installing a split second VC3100 voltage clamp on my 2011 Nissan Xterra. This is a truck that we put a supercharger on, a still-in kit, and we occasionally get a P0101 and a P0103 error. Both of those are over voltage situations to the ECU. So what I've done so far is I've actually replaced the uh, mass airflow sensor with the newer model, which um, Nissan recognized they had a problem with some of these errors in the 2011 model series. So they came out with a new sensor. So that's been replaced. I also took the truck to the dealer and had the ECU reflashed for the new software that goes with this. And um, I've taken some voltage readings here on the between ground and this uh, fourth pin over. The first pin's blank. So it's the red wire here. And what I came up with, with uh, no starting the engine, is 0.5 volts DC. At high idle, I came up with 1.7 volts DC. At low idle, with the vehicle in gear, it's 1.35 volts DC. And then when I take it out on the road and crank it all the way up to 6,000 RPM or higher, it gets to about 4.7 volts DC. So I believe all this is okay. So my concern is the still-in piggyback unit may be sending little voltage spikes out. So we're going to look about we're going to look at putting the uh, voltage clamp between the ECU and the still-in piggyback. But before I do that, we're going to take a look at it and make some measurements and see if we can get to the root cause and see if that's indeed the issue or not. And we're probably going to set this to around 4.85 volts, which is a little over what we think we need. But we're hoping that if there's little uh, minute spikes, it'll cancel them out. So we're going to get started on that here in just a second, and I'll show you what that we're going to do. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I just wanted to recheck some of my past work. So I've tapped into the pin on the um, mass airflow sensor, and now I'm doing a continuity check over to pin 16 on the large connector. On this one, it's a white wire, and my continuity is 0.2 ohms, which is good. That's about the um, value. This, this particular meter doesn't have a zero setting. So that's about the particular value of this type of lead. So that's good. So next thing I want to do is I want to tap onto the output from the piggyback and see what it looks like because I'm actually going to um, uh, put a voltmeter on it and we'll start the engine, but I'm also going to put an oscilloscope on it and see if I can see any kind of waveform. So I'll get that all set up and then we'll check it out. Okay, at this point I've tapped into the pin 4 of the output going to the ECU from the still-in piggyback and we're going to get some voltage readings. So the first thing we're going to do is key on and get a voltage reading and then we'll start it and get an idea of what's going on. So we'll check that out. So I have a voltage reading at 3.7 with no start. Okay, so with a high idle, it's about 1.8 volts. So we're going to stop it and we're going to um, plug in the oscilloscope and see if we got any kind of weird waveforms. Okay, I've hooked up my oscilloscope and right now we have it running and we're looking for any kind of weird waveforms and I haven't seen any. I did put it, um, I put the oscilloscope on here and I keyed it on without starting it and there was nothing unusual. Well, really there is something unusual. The still in piggyback puts out a higher voltage than we would have expected. It doesn't match the input from the mass airflow sensor. However, when it's idling and running, it seems to be okay. So um, the one thing we would really need to do is take it out on the road and see what kind of voltage it gets at a higher RPM. So um, I'm not sure how we're going to be able to set that up exactly. So I may just install the clamp at 4.85 volts, take it out for a test drive and see, see what happens. So I'll have to figure that out here in a minute. So once I got it figured out, I'll come back and we'll talk about it. 
All right, so um, I'm getting ready to adjust this clamp, and I think we're going to adjust it to about 4.8 volts. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn my DC power supply on to 12 volts input. Um, you can put it up to about 13 and a half, 14 volts. I'm going to go with 12. And then <clears throat> I'm monitoring my output right now, and it says 6.7 volts DC. So if I take my potentiometer adjustment tool, and we go for this one right here. We should be able to adjust it down, which I'm doing now. And I'm going to adjust it to an output of 4.75, 4.8, somewhere in that range. It's a 10 turn pot. So, and that's again with 12 volts input. Very nicely constructed unit, really nice. So I'll go 4.8. And by the way, the unit comes with T-taps and everything. It's awesome. 4.8 volts. So that should be good. And let me see if it... Um, I was going to try to figure out how to see if it works through the whole range, but I guess that's not really possible. So uh, anyway, we'll go ahead and install it, and we'll check it out, see what happens. Okay, so here's what we've gotten finished up now is... Uh, We've gone ahead and put the clamp on, and after we adjusted it to 4.8 volts, and we double stuck it down with some tape, but we can get it back off if we need to readjust it. Um, I just, for the time being, wrapped the wire around real well and uh, wire tied it into place in case we have to take it off and adjust it or anything. This gives us some freedom to work. So um, we did start it. Seems to run fine. We're going to take it for a test drive. Um, we'll let you know in the comments if it uh, has alleviated this problem or not. And that's it. Thanks for watching.